Salut Aujourd'hui, on est en direction du sud de la Hollande pour rencontrer des éleveurs d'insectes. C'est une première pour nous, c'est une nouvelle série qu'on a décidé de démarrer tous les deux. Et avec un petit peu de chance, on arrivera à vous emmener tout autour de l'Europe et si c'est du monde. <rire> et on espère que ça vous plaira. Il faut savoir que la vidéo n'est pas du tout sponsorisée, on n'a aucun partenariat commercial avec les éleveurs qu'on va voir. Tout est à notre charge et d'ailleurs si vous voulez nous aider, il y a le lien vers le Patreon pour devenir l'un de nos patrons et toutes les infos sont dans la description. Et du coup, pour ne pas manquer les prochains épisodes de cette série, n'oubliez pas de vous abonner à la chaîne et d'activer la cloche de notification. Comme ça, vous serez alerté dès qu'on met une nouvelle vidéo en ligne. Du coup, aujourd'hui, on rencontre Zarin Forest, un couple d'éleveurs hollandais vraiment super chouette. Et à force d'échanger ensemble sur les réseaux, on s'est dit que ça serait l'occasion parfaite de faire une vidéo sur euh, les insectes de compagnie. En fait. Mon hollandais étant un peu limité, euh, la suite de la vidéo sera en anglais, mais ne vous inquiétez pas, on va mettre des sous-titres pour que ceux qui sont moins à l'aise avec l'anglais puissent quand même comprendre. Du coup, pour cette première vidéo, on va aller leur poser plein de questions sur l'arrêt de vache, récupérer des conseils super utiles pour ceux d'entre vous qui élèvent des insectes ou qui souhaitent s'y mettre. Et du coup, ben, on se retrouve chez eux tout à l'heure. Surtout, restez aussi bien attentifs parce qu'on va faire un giveaway dans cette vidéo. C'est vrai. Allez, tout à l'heure So thank you for having us. Uh, can you talk to me about you and about rainforest? We started like uh, one year and a half ago. We were doing this our hobby. She was breeding some uh, snails, like giant snails. Yeah, yeah the, the giant. African <laughs> giant snails. Yeah, I wasn't breeding nothing at the moment. We created a page just to show a little bit what she was doing, having the fun of making the pictures. You know, sharing with people mm. a little bit also the, the techniques for breathing. But yeah, uh, in a little time the snails Got, got out boring and, and, and they breed really easy. Yeah. We had a lot, it was a lot of work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you told me they eat a lot. Yeah, yeah, they eat a lot. We saw some ones, but the thing is that she asked me. I was always busy with it. Yeah. Mm. I was doing my things and helping her. So since yeah, we were always busy having so much work, ask me, would you like to have some kind of different insect? I don't mm. know, something that you like more than snails. And I proposed the, the beetles. Oh, I always thought cool. that beetles are really cool. cool. It looks like it grew fastly because one year and a half, 2,500 subscribers, that's quite a lot for beetle breeders. Yeah, we didn't expect that. Yeah, didn't no. didn't expect <laughs> such, a, such a sex. Yeah, in the beginning it was, yes, of people who create a page because they're doing something, they don't have much pretension. I feel like the most of people who you like with the rest. So yeah, we start with beetles and we find out the, the, the problems that normally the most of hobbyists will find here. The lack of info, the difficulty of finding some kind of species or mm. certain types of beetles, you know. What was the first uh, species you got? I think the first we got was the, was the Pagnoga. Mm. And on the fair we got the Silotrupus. Silotrupus, Gideon. Oh, and yeah. that's a good one to start with. Yeah. 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 And, the, and you know what happened? that uh, The female died after two days, I think. Oh, no. oh. Yeah. <laughs> So we were done with beetle breeding. like. Yeah, it was really sad yeah. and kind of frustrating because it was my first big beetle, mm, kind of big. big. Yeah, we got a pair, we have, you know, a lot of expectations to yeah. get their new babies and to breed them and that <laughs> and that. And you know what happened? We got the the beetle from an insect seller in an insect mm. fair. They were not specialized on, mm. on beetle. It looks like they were wild, really old already. We didn't got any information about them. It was frustrating because they died and also... so. Like I was saying, since the beginning we found it was easy to see what was failing a little bit on in the hobby. Yeah, since we decided to breed beetles, we started to import directly from uh, you know the areas where the beetles were living, trying to get a better quality or bigger sizes, more fresh genetics. How did you start learning what flakes are using, what breeding techniques? I think this is more testing trying error learn fix and opening your eyes mm. you need to try to understand what's going on in yeah. order to be able to change to try a different option until you find what what really works mm. in the case of flex oils or substrates in europe we still have a long road to walk still we need to try and to experiment a lot to reach the point that they have in other parts of the world yeah because what, what you told us is despite having books like this one on the market which mm -hmm. tell good advice stuff points 
there was at the time not much of a helping community to get good advice and start building success. The community is good and in Europe is big. The problem is that, like I've saying, the lack of information forced to people to fill these empty spots mm. with something. Mm. And tradition have made us to stay, or, or, or you know, mm. in making a mistake for a long time. We took these methods, these ways, as the correct way. Yeah, in some way, the difficult part now is to get free from the old ways, to try to open our minds, to open our eyes, to see what it's really happening in our breathing room, in order to make it better, because yeah, it's the only way. Yeah, theory is fine, but after you need practice to yeah, yeah, yeah. have the right In the beginning, how to say, like in this book, when it was Brighton, was after uh, some years of experience, let's say one of the best beetle breeders, they found for the first time some species, and yeah, of course, they found some kind of problems that mm. you will find when you build a new species. They succeed, they solve some kind of problems, and basing on uh, the experience of these people, many other breeders have created new techniques, they have reached better uh, results and mm. stuff like that. I mean, we count so with some information that it's good, but uh, we need to understand that this hobby is really new. Telling, breathing, it's in this way or that way, it's kind of a error because it's in evolution. We are still learning and we still have a lot to learn. Especially here in Europe, the hobby is really young and we should be way more open to try and to evolve. Compared to a lot of um, insect breeders, we see that you take a close attention to your picture, to your um, genetics, Uh, quality and uh, and in general your page is really sleek can you tell me like if it's important to you if it's something you really are entitled to do of course it's important like I said in the beginning we started just because we wanted to share in some way what we were doing of course it's important to show it in the proper way at least to catch the attention of people and uh, Yeah, we really like what we do and uh, we see it beautiful. I like photography, everything that is related with the image, it's something that I like to, to do. So I'm a painter, I'm a drawer, tattoo artist. And the Beatles are, yeah, sometimes they are easy models and sometimes <laughs> it's, a, it's a real challenge to picture them. So it's really funny to make it. I mean, it's not only for the visual part, it's also because we enjoy mm. doing it. On the other hand, uh, all the pictures that we use, We're gonna use them in the website, so we try to. As you said, the hobby is new. There are countries like Japan where it's very well spread. Lots of people do breed beetles, but here, at, at least in France, for us, uh, not a lot of people are doing it. The community is growing, but still very small. Is it already great inside your country, or do you have more and more customers coming for insects? Things are changing. I mean, like I was explaining. When we started, yeah, the most of the species that you're able to find was most common. Mm. Pagnola, some, Pagnola, some African uh, flower beetles, mm. some stags or rhinos coming from uh, Indonesia, wild. I don't know, we wanted to try different things too. Like we said, it was difficult to find beetles around to buy, to, to start breeding. So in some way we were forced to try to find these things outside. We start to create contacts with breeders <laughs> and, you know, that's how it works. In a little time, we create nice connections and, yeah, it's change. And why do you think beetles is a great pet? In which way it is a really good pet? I mean, any animal or insect can be a great pet. It depends on how you look at them. <laughs> yeah. Not everybody can see the beauty or the interesting part of But, you know, in that terms, like I say, anything can be beautiful. I'm fascinated, she's fascinated too about beetles. We spend the whole time taking care of them, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. We have many species and in different uh, stages, so we're always busy with it. Every day brings something new. And beetles, yeah, technically they are not easy. I don't know, the different the stages that they have, the changes that they go through, make them really, really interesting. What is your favorite species? That's Kordama, Dorcus Hopei Binodolosus from Japan. I think he's our favorite beetle, yeah. Yeah, is that because of the size or the personality or...? His personality. He's really easy handling and you you can do everything with him. He will never bite. Yeah, they're really bite. gentle, they're not that yeah. aggressive. They won't bite or... No, he will never bite. Okay. They also live long. This allows you to create some kind of connection with him. And uh, what is your best memories about breeding insects? 
I think it's always related with people, people that you met. The good part of not finding everything that you need here in, in Europe for us to look for it outside. And, and yeah, in the way you find bad people, in the way you can find great people too. Mm. Mm -hmm. Of course, the bad people will let them go away, but the good ones, yeah. Like you said before, there is a lot of competition, mm. but it's not a healthy competition. People is afraid. So when they find something that it's competitive, instead of trying to improve themselves and get better, it's part of the human nature. They try to destroy it. So we try to relate ourselves with people that they're not in direct uh, competition, competition yeah. with us, but they share in some way the philosophy that we want to, to approach it. Yeah, and speaking of that, you have even built like a, a network of breeders, mm -hmm. like the Rainforest team, with people all around the world. Are you planning to trip, to make trips to yeah, meet that's, them? Yeah, that's, that's part of the plan. In the future, <laughs> we would like to. I mean, we have people, like you say, from all around the world, Indonesia, Korea, Japan, Germany, uh, I don't know, everywhere in Europe. We need to find a way to create like a common, mm. uh, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. interest. Yeah, because in the end, what we pretend is is to create something. I think it's cool if we develop that with a international, yeah. no, yeah. kind of totally. exactly. kind of view. Mm -hmm. yeah. So why don't we have a look at the breeding room to show people what you have? <laughs> So, so we are in your breeding room. <laughs> Can you maybe show us uh, some stuff? Here we have, at the moment, the breeding boxes. There is where the females will lay the, the eggs. And uh, normally the way we do is is harvesting the eggs. So we will, once in a while, check the boxes, collect the eggs, move them to little boxes where they will hatch. And once the larva hatch, like uh, for example in this pot, someone, yes, here you can see already some larva. Oh yeah, Once they ones. hatch, we move them to independent pots. So they will be moved to a different part of the room, depends of their species or, so here we have Kinchi. Yeah, kinchi is uh, the roots of the mushroom. Yeah, we could call the roots of the mushroom is uh, mycelium. Yeah, mycelium. Growing on a sawdust. Normally in the nature, this will happen in a, the fungus colonize and they decay the material, allowing the beetle larva to digest it. So it depends of the kind of beetle, we're gonna offer to them a different kind of substrate. Mm. Here, the most of them are rhinos, so they are in like soil. Those are all breeding boxes that have been harvested. Well, maybe can you show us the species you talked about earlier, the, the really, the one you prefer? Could the regent one. one, yeah. Oh. Yeah. I think you see. Yeah, pieces, yeah. He's like huge. He can be bigger, but yeah, it's not bad. The good thing about this line is a Kawanishi. It's not the size, but the, the shape. The shape, symmetry, yeah. Yeah. perfection. The black diamonds. You have different yeah, lines that they can grow bigger. Like a, yeah, and bigger. he's very gentle, he won't bat you. No. no, 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 not at all. You can actually annoy him. Yeah. If we take out Palawan or <laughs> Case OK, we will see the blood. Yeah, we always give him to the children and yeah. on the fairs. Maybe and it's, it's really light. easy. Normally stuck beetles, they can be really aggressive. So this one, yeah, it's one that you can pet, you can hang. When you have, for example, a pair, mm -hmm. uh, what you're going to do? You're going to put them in the breeding box. Do you let the male with the female or when the... Normally in the nature, the female will go to the male. Mm. Depends of the species. There will be an attraction, a chemical attraction for the pheromones or... But the most of the times, it's the male protecting a feeding place. Mm. They open a hole in the, in the tree where they will feed from the tree sap. Mm. And the females, yeah, when they're starving, they go there and they use this moment to, to mate. When I prepare a new breeding box, I set everything and then we place first the male. Okay, yeah. Feed him, mm. let him get used to, you know, mm. his new house. And when he feels like the king of the <laughs> house, we introduce a female that has not been fed 
of feed uh, properly for a few days before so she is hungry yeah she is gonna be relaxed she is gonna look directly for the food and in that moment yeah the, the male normally he will be close to the food area mm. in a height he will be always checking uh, the food and when the females appear they just met the, and that's how it works if you do this way normally it succeeds you do not have to block the mandibles of yeah, the beetles the or anything like that because it's how they do in the natural mm. sometimes some pairs they just don't match or mm. the female doesn't like the male or the male doesn't like the female <laughs> so you need to pay attention if something is not going good or you see something weird it's better always to take or the female or the male out depends on the species but a lot of male are dying after reproduction do you wait that the male die after the reproduction or do you take it off or do you let him with the female normally once they're mates we take them out we take yeah. them out right. if you keep them separated they will live way way longer yeah of course a male that have been never mate will live longer Mm -hmm. The more they made, the, the shorter yeah, they will Yeah, it takes a lot of energy. In the, hand, <laughs> the most of the times, once yeah. they mate one time, okay. it's more than enough for the female. The point is that if you let the male into the breeding box, he's gonna try to mate every time. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. He's gonna distract the female. He's gonna own the food. So the female is gonna feed when he allow her. Yeah. And the female, when they're laying eggs, they need their time. They need their space, mm. their peace, and a lot of food. The whole food has to be for them to mm. recover energies and to not waste time, you know, because the male is annoying or anything like that. Yeah. If you do this in a little time, you will get more eggs too. So maybe can you show us the biggest one you have or more the impressive one? one. <laughs> we have a big piece of game. We have some big ones that we can show you. <laughs> Ok, et eh bien c'est la fin de la première partie de la vidéo, on se retrouve dans une deuxième où on va vous montrer des insectes vraiment impressionnants et surtout comment en avoir chez vous. N'oubliez pas de vous abonner et on se retrouve dans une prochaine vidéo